All right, so now that we have discussed some of the basic fluid properties, we can finally start talking about fluid statics. So the first fundamental concept that we need to understand about statics is that in any closed container or system, the pressure on any, uh, basically the pressure at any point in that um, container is going to be the same according to Pascal's law. Now, the idea behind this is that you consider something like a liquid, which is not compressible, then it makes sense that if you exert a force at some point, then the pressure should basically be the same at any point within that closed container because the fluid is not really going to go anywhere. Because if you have a force here and a force there and they sort of balance out in terms of the pressures at those points, then we can infer that the fluid is just going to remain in that position. It's not going to be displaced at all, which means that at any point, the forces or the pressures need to be the same for the static equilibrium condition to be met. And this is a very important concept because there are certain areas in which this is quite applicable and it's pretty straightforward. So I'm going to show you an example of this. Suppose you're having something like a car. So let's just place a car here. All right, suppose you have a car and let's say that the weight of that car is something like 5,000 newtons. All right, so it's a small car and we're going to place it on a platform. So suppose this is something like a workshop where we're, we're going to repair the car. So we need to lift it up by some distance. So here we're going to have some kind of piston on a platform and this is going to be connected. So let's just connect this here it is going to be connected to some kind of pump. So this is going to be kind of like a hydraulic um, hydraulic platform. So basically we're gonna exert the force here based on a compressor or some sort of turbine. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna lift that car up. So we need to overcome the total weight of the car, which is 5,000 newtons. So we have this force acting down here. And the idea is, well, if we make this very large, suppose that the diameter in this section, let's call it D1, and let's call this diameter here D2, then if this is more, much larger than this one, then that means that the force that we need to exert here should be a lot lower than the actual mass here, because it doesn't make sense that we would want to try to exert 5,000 newtons back. The idea is to make this a lot more efficient by taking a ratio. So let's give this some dimensions. We have D1, let's have it equal to something quite large, like 1.5 meters. And then let's make D2 equal to something like 50 centimeters. Oh, actually, even, even less than that, let's make it 30 centimeters. <clears throat> so it's a ratio of basically 5, um, 1 to 5 here. And now we need to find out what the force is that we need to exert here so that we can actually lift this up. So what is the minimum force required to overcome the weight of that car and the platform combined force? So what we're going to do is we're going to do basically a equal, we are going to equalize the pressures. So the pressure at point one should be equal to the pressure at point two. And this just follows from Pascal's law because we know that the pressure within this closed system should be the same since we're dealing with a liquid here or essentially just an incompressible fluid. So P1 equals to P2. Now pressure is just force over area. So we're going to have force 1 over area 1. This is going to be force 2 over area 2, which means that if we want to calculate the force required at this end, we're going to have to use the ratio of the two areas times F1. Okay, so what is the areas? Well, suppose that these are circular kind of cross sections. That means that area 2 is going to be pi d2 squared over 4. And then a1 is going to be pi d1 squared over 4. So if we plug those in here, the force at point 2 here that we need to calculate is going to be the following. The pi and 4 is going to cancel out, and we're going to be left with d2 over d1, all of that squared, times f1. And now we just plug in the values that we started with. So we have 30 centimeters, which is 0 0.3 meters here, 
then 1.5 meters at the bottom all of that squared and the weight of the car the force exerted by the car is 5,000 newtons all right, so let's just plug that in our calculator and let's see what we get from that. And this is going to be 200 newtons. And that's quite a remarkable thing because in order to lift a 5,000 newtons weight, we only need to apply 200 newtons, which is a weight of about 20 kilograms. So essentially the efficiency of this hydraulic press or hydraulic kind of system is going to be so the efficiency is just the, the force required. So we have 5,000. So basically, we're going to have a 25 ratio. So 25 to 1. So we only need to apply 1 25th of the total force in order to lift that weight. Now, of course, this is not really efficiency, but it's more of a mechanical kind of ratio. So we only need 1 25th. And Notice what would happen if we actually make this even smaller. If we made the diameter here even smaller, then the force required would be less because in order to equalize the pressure, we would require more. So it, it just comes to show that this has a very direct application. Now, of course, Pascal's law is quite basic and there are a lot of things that do not um, come into play here. So this only works for completely closed systems. So if, for example, we had some aperture here and, and we were exposed to the pressure from the atmosphere or, or some other fluid, this wouldn't really be applicable. But as far as closed systems with a single fluid um, is concerned, we can apply this law. And it is quite a nice kind of way of thinking about how fluids are actually being used for uh, transmitting a force from one, one place to another.